Hi, I'm Kindo, and welcome to another Tidal Cycles video tutorial. Hi, today we're going to talk about two different ways in Tidal to create continuously uh, changing tempos in your patterns. So imagine if you have a pattern playing and then imagine like a sine wave of, of tempos. So your pattern gradually speeds up over and over and over again, and eventually it gets to a maximum speed. And then your pattern starts slowing down gradually uh, over and over again. So as your pattern plays, it continuously gets faster and then it gets slower and then faster again. Uh, or maybe even like a saw shape where it gets, it starts slow and it continuously gets fast and then goes back to the slow, uh, slow speed again, and then gradually gets fast again. So I'm going to show that type of technique and how you can achieve that. So there's two ways you can do it, at least that I'm going to show. One is with nudge. <laughs> And the other is with space out. So we're going to start with nudge. So here's a clap pattern. Very exciting. And so by default, nudge is zero. So we can add nudge here and it has no effect. And if I put a value in for nudge, this will uh, alter the scheduling of those notes, in this case, by two tenths of a second into the future. So it's nudging all of those notes into the future by two tenths of a second. And if you play this with another clap pattern, and I'm going to uh, play these claps at a, a different speed so you can hear them. So now if I play these two patterns at the same time, you can hear the, the nudged pattern playing, uh, playing offset from the, the normal pattern. You can also uh, put a pattern of numbers into the nudge function just like many other th things in title so i can do something kind of random like this and this will create a new scheduling of the note into the future for each of the four claps in the pattern now in this case i picked values that don't really relate to each other so it sounds kind of odd which may or may not be musical to you, depending on what you're trying to do. But where this gets really cool is you can put a sign function into this. And sign in title will produce a pattern of values from zero to one. And it will have the uh, pattern that will resemble a sine wave. So in this case, we, we don't have very many notes in our pattern to really um, uh, make it sound like that. But, uh, if I increase the pattern density to eight and just do a nudge sign, let's just see what this sounds like. So it doesn't really sound like much, but that's because the sign pattern is going too fast. It's, uh, going in a, in a complete period once per cycle. So we want to slow that down. So if I say slow, four, uh, it should have more of a noticeable effect where the, the time, the, the density of the pattern, or I'm sorry, the scheduling, it kind of oscillates from zero seconds to one second in the future. Pretty cool. You can also scale. So right now, by default, it's scaling from zero to one. That's what the sine function does. But we can, of course, scale this to other values like zero to two, which will 
make the uh, the scheduling on the um, maximum value more more pronounced and it'll have a different effect. Let's just see what that sounds like. So that doesn't really actually sound like what you'd expect. It has kind of, um, it doesn't sound smooth, which leads me to the next thing I wanted to mention, which is you have to kind of experiment and be careful with what values you put in here. The scale, minimum and maximum, the slow amount, and the density of your pattern all interact to create uh, a desirable or undesirable effect. So if I take the same thing I just did and now slow it down by a factor of two so that it, it goes over eight cycles, it will it may sound more pleasant. Let's see what happens. So that, that sounds completely different. Again, here's slow four, which is a bit faster. So that doesn't really produce what, what I'm trying to do. So just be mindful of the values you choose and you kind of have to play with them until they, they sound good. Let me go back to a shorter example here. So the last thing I want to mention about nudge is that it, it doesn't really do what you'd expect um, because it, it, it's really messing up how notes are scheduled in the future. So when you apply a function like re the reverse function or rev, you would think, oh, well, it's just going to play everything backwards. In this case, it's going to just um, maybe invert the sine wave. That's not true. It it really just produces unexpected results and, and the timing just sounds kind of wrong. So here, let me play it without reverse so you know what this sounds like. So that sounds nice and smooth. Now let's reverse that. So I, I can't really explain what's going on behind the scenes. I'm not really sure, but all I can say is that Nudge will schedule events into the future, and that has possibly an unexpected effect on other things you do in the in the chain of functions. So just be mindful of that, and uh, uh, use that to your advantage, or or just just kind of plan around it. So that's Nudge. So let's shift gears and talk about space out. So space out is different. Um, what space out will do is it will allow you to play a single cycle of a pattern at a specific speed and then play a single cycle at a different speed and so on. So you can have a list of speeds and play a single cycle at each speed. This is very different from how slow and fast work uh, or slow and density. If you've used slow and fast, uh, you may end up playing a pattern more than once per cycle. It's speeding up the pattern and, or slowing a pattern down. Uh, and it's not trying to fit a pattern into a, a cycle. It's just playing it at a certain speed. So a space out will, will play a pattern once at a given speed. So if I start with, with this pattern, I have space out one and space out accepts a list of values. So in this case, I just have a, a list with uh, the value one inside, which just has, just means play space out at the value of one. 
every cycle. And this has no effect on the pattern at all because uh, it's saying multiply the cycle speed by one. So this particular pattern sounds like this. So now if I do a one comma two, it will play the pattern at a speed of one and then it'll play at uh, the pattern at uh, twice its length, or, or uh, in other words, it's gonna slow it down by a factor of two. So let's listen to that. And we can use fractional values less than one. 0 0.5 will play it at half the cycle length or it will speed it up by a factor of two. So keep in mind that it's only playing each of these speeds once. So it plays the pattern at this speed, then immediately the next speed, and then immediately the next speed, and so on, and then it starts over. So you have to kind of be quick to, to hear it. Uh, and of course, you can put any values you want in here. And yeah, I don't need to type them any more out than that. So you can get some pretty weird stuff. Okay, going back to the main point of this was to create continuously accelerating and decelerating patterns. So what we can do is use Haskell's, well, before I get into that, if I wanna create a pattern that continuously slows down here, I can do something like this. And what this will do is, uh, play the pattern at increasing speeds or smaller cycle lengths incrementally from one all the way to 0 0.3, incrementing by uh, minus one tenth. So that's cool. And of course we could go in the opposite direction but we can take advantage of Haskell's list building syntax to automate creating lists like this. If I wanted to increment by, let's say, five hundredths instead of a tenth, that'd take a lot of effort to type out. So instead, what we could do is define uh, the first two numbers with uh, separated by a comma, and that, that defines the gap between steps, and then our ending number that we want to end at. So this will create a list of values between one and 0 0.2 with steps of one tenth. And so we can create longer lists this way with much less effort. And this pattern sounds like this. And we can combine two lists together using the plus plus operator. So we can have this list go backwards back up to one. And now we will have kind of a, a triangle wave, I guess you could say, of, of different speeds. So in this specific case, I'm using a linear list of values. So it's not quite as smooth as what Nudge was doing. Um, I'm not gonna get into different list building syntax in, in Haskell, but if you create more of a, a logarithmic or exponential list of values, you can uh, certainly do that with Haskell as well to build your lists. Um, I'm just gonna create a more granular list with more values in it right now and i just want to i'm just curious what this sounds like so i'm now going to create more speeds 
in this case, incrementing by five hundredths. And this, so this should give us a more granular set of values. So as you can hear, that pattern uh, takes a longer time to uh, um, hear in, in its entirety because we have now doubled the, or halved the, uh, the size between steps. I'm not sure how many steps are actually generated here, but it's a very small number. Uh, if you want things to go faster, you can certainly put a different uh, speed uh, density or, or fast too to double things up. So there's different ways to play with uh, speed that way. Uh, kind of like nudge, there are some special values that that do or do not tend to work very well. If you speed things up, or um, use different increments or different pattern densities, you may or may not get the results you expect. So experiment and, and see what works for you. Um, similar to nudge, space out does strange things to the scheduling of, of time. And also, uh, like with Nudge, if you try to reverse a space out pattern, you, you don't quite get what you'd expect. Uh, I'll just play this one and you'll kind of hear it. It ends up being kind of more of a, a jagged way of scheduling time. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what's going on behind the scenes, but um, just be mindful of that. So there you have it. There are two ways you can kind of stretch time elastically in title, either with nudge or space out. Uh, I'm sure there are other ways, but those are the two I wanted to talk about. And I think they're the easiest to get started with. And they're two techniques that I like to use a lot. So that's all. Uh, hopefully you can find some use out of these things and happy coding, be safe and I'll see you in the future.